So 20 years ago, I uh, set out to Paris, a much younger and more energetic me, to uh, study the difference between the French system, EMS, uh, a EMS system with physicians in the field, uh, compared to the US-based uh, paramedic system. And to answer this question once and for all, not just for trauma, but for all critical care emergencies. Uh, and needless to say, it was an epic fail uh, for me to try to do this in one year, but uh, a really fun year. Um, please also don't judge the hair. It was a, a really long time ago and a bad decision. <laughs> uh, but what's been fun and interesting is to watch the systems really come more together and, and be more alike actually over the past 20 years. So in France, most patients don't get a physician, in fact, uh, what they call the SMER or the mobile ICU. Uh, there's physician-based triage to decide which patients will get this resource. And most patients will get uh, those sapeurs-pompiers, which basically operate at an EMT level to transport the patient to the hospital. And now in the United States, we have more and more physician-based specialty care systems. For example, in Los Angeles, we have the mobile stroke unit, uh, which recently released data uh, showing that there are improved outcomes from stroke uh, utilizing these physician-based uh, units. We have the mobile ECMO unit in Minneapolis, which where they actually will cannulate and cath a patient in the field. Uh, and this is not the only model like this in the US. Uh, we also have physician-based uh, telemedicine program. So this is a picture of Dr. Sanko uh, from USC uh, communicating with a patient who's called 911 in the LAFD dispatch center. And we have street medicine teams that will go out to the homeless where they're at and treat them and prevent uh, complications. So lots of ways in which physicians are interacting with patients before they get to the hospital. So what about trauma? Well, in Los Angeles, we're very lucky to have the hospital emergency response teams or HERT. Uh, many of you may be familiar with this team, but for those who are not, this is a three person team, a surgeon, an emergency physician and a nurse who can mobilize within 20 minutes to uh, go to a scene and provide higher level care. And we have two teams in Los Angeles, one based at LA County USC and one based at Harbor UCLA. And while not utilized frequently, uh, the herd has had three responses in the past few years. Uh, displayed clockwise from the right, uh, there was a patient who was cleaning a hopper, which was unfortunately turned on. His legs were sucked into the auger. He was pinned prone against the slanted wall in a confined space. And had it not been for this team on scene recognizing the need to immediately mobilize higher level care, he certainly would have died. But the hurt arrived within 25 minutes, provided uh, bilateral uh, amputations, and this patient actually did quite well. Uh, we had a patient in Torrance who had his arm stuck in a printing press, which couldn't be dismantled nor uh, cut because of fire hazard concerns, and so required a field amputation. And then finally, a patient who had impaled himself on a tree branch about 15 feet up, uh, who required sedation and, and coordination between the hurt and the rescue team to extricate him. And there's no doubt that these three patients benefited from physician care in the field, uh, but these are three patients out of the more than 100,000 patients that we see uh, with trauma in LA County each year. So we really need to consider the pro cons of a physician-based system. So on the pro side, people will say that increased skill, experience, procedures, uh, scope of practice will improve outcomes. And while this may or may not be true, what's definitely true is that physicians do more in the field. So if you have a physician team, they're going to do more procedures. And that's been shown in numerous studies. People also argue that earlier interventions are going to improve mortality. This uh, editorial by Holcomb in 2018, uh, in this uh, picture, he argues that hemorrhagic shock from truncal trauma is really the best opportunity to save lives and that the time to get that patient to definitive uh, care in the operating room is four times as long as the peak time to death. And if we can move that hemorrhage control and blood product transfusion, et cetera, to the field, we can reduce that time to control by 78% and potentially save lives. And we do have data from the military showing that blood product transfusions can improve outcomes. Uh, Dr. Shackelford uh, 
did this study looking at transfusions, blood products, both PRBCs and plasma in uh, the field uh, in military uh, and found that it both decreased mortality in 24 hours as well as 30 day mortality. However, civilian literature is a bit more mixed depending on the EMS system. On the flip side, people will say increasing time worsen out worsens outcomes. And that has been shown in several studies. So uh, Gauss in France in 2019 showed an association between increased mortality and increased scene time, as well as uh, Brown in Pennsylvania using their statewide database, uh, also finding that prolonged scene times were associated with worse outcomes. But this isn't necessarily linked to physicians. Not every study suggests that physicians actually increase scene time. Uh, Beeler in, in Germany, for example, did not find increased scene time when they added a physician response, although we tend to associate the physician-based model with a stay in play and the US-based paramedic model with a load and go. There are also logistical challenges, and I won't spend too much time on this, but it has to be acknowledged that to bring a physician-based system to the United States would incur incredible cost, staffing challenges, deployment challenges. How do we cover the entirety of Los Angeles uh, with uh, these, um, these physician units. And we're, we're actually struggling through some of these issues right now as we think about expanding on the mobile stroke unit. And probably the most important and most uh, difficult is uh, integration with EMS systems in terms of dispatch and deployment of these units uh, within the current EMS system. So what's in the literature? And I, I have to say, I was quite surprised by the volume of literature on this topic, but less surprised by the fact that it's really a difficult question to answer. And I hate to give away the punchline, but um, the, the studies really leave us still with a big question mark. So there was one randomized control trial. It was conducted in San Diego in 1987. They uh, enrolled about 600 patients comparing a physician and paramedic based team to an RN paramedic based team responding by helicopter. They found that the physician based team reduced mortality uh, compared to predicted using the TRIS model by 35%. And then RN paramedic team had as predicted mortality. What was interesting about this is that both teams had the same scope of practice. They could do the same procedures, they had the same equipment. Uh, what they did find was that there was increased uh, protocol violations and increased procedural fail failures with the RN paramedic team. And they concluded that with education and online medical control, you could close the gap, that it was really about that rather than increasing the scope of practice of providers in the field. So after that, let me see it. After that, there were numerous, uh, mostly single center observational studies and Botker conducted a systematic review in 2008 of these studies and found that nine of the studies uh, showed an improved mortality. Seven of the studies showed no difference and three of the studies showed worse mortality with physician care. Uh, subsequent to that, there was a, uh, another review by Wilson. This was in 2017. I included all this detail because I know you get a handout, so I don't expect you to read it all. Bottom line is that four of the five studies did show some improved, uh, reduced mortality with physician-based care. So they concluded that there was an association with physician-based trauma management for severe multi-system trauma um, com compared to paramedic-based models. For TBI, I think the best or the most comprehensive study, I should say, is Popple's uh, review in PEC in 2019. And if you're not red, green, colorblind like my husband, you will be able to appreciate how varied the outcomes were. So across mortality, several studies showing improvement, several studies showing harm, and then many studies showing no difference. And that's uh, true across all the different outcomes that they looked at. So again, kind of not totally clear what the answer is. But the confusion continues. This is, I found really interesting. So in the past three years, there have been three studies out of Japan using the same trauma database. One study showed no difference. One show, study showed improved mortality. One study showed or improved survival. And one study showed reduced survival with physician care. Uh, Granted, they did have different uh, time periods, although overlapping and slightly different inclusion criteria. For example, Hirano looked at all uh, trauma with ISS greater than uh, 15, whereas uh, the uh, endo study was blunt only. 
but it really just goes to show, depending how you slice the data, you'll get a very different answer. So when you look at physician staffed critical care helicopter responses, this basically sums it up. Lots of single center, mostly retrospective observational trials that show some show benefit, some show, some show harm, and others show no difference. And it likely comes down to who's included in the study, how severely they're injured, uh, what the resources in the system are. Uh, one study showed that one out of 14 patients, for example, benefited from the physician care. So it's really that there are some patients who will benefit, but most patients likely will not. And so depending on the study's inclusion, you'll get a different answer. But there are other benefits, including improved pain control and anxiolysis. Uh, there are, uh, is the idea of triage, so low under triage, and also uh, increased procedures. Really impressive data out of the UK, for example, with the NHS showing 18% uh, survival after field thoracotomies with majority of patients having good neurologic outcome. Uh, and this is being done in other European countries as well. And there is data to suggest that improved airway management and blood product transfusion in the field, which by the way, is not in the scope of practice for ALS providers in California, uh, is helpful. And so there are opportunities to bring additional care to the field. But I really liked this quote by uh, Umenhofer and Scheindiger, which I'm gonna read to you and I'll have to look down here to do so. Uh, it is the skill, the technique, the awareness of pitfalls and the capability to handle complications that makes a difference, not the person in possession of the skill. So what this kind of sums up is that most of the time our patients are going to be treated by paramedics and they're gonna be the first person on scene even if we can mobilize a physician. So if we train our paramedics and make sure they have the skills to manage patients, that's where we can do the most uh, benefit. And this brings me to the importance of the EMS medical director. EMS physicians providing training, oversight, even response to the field, at least intermittently to see what's going on, to see the pitfalls, to identify the areas for improvement is so important. And it's really interesting to see the expansion of physician involvement in EMS over the past many years. When I arrived in LA, there, LA County Fire, one of the biggest EMS providers in the country had one part-time medical director. Now pictured here, looking very dashing, is there three, full-time medical directors with 24-7 on-call physician response vehicles, very involved. And I think this is really where we can make the biggest difference is, is by providing this oversight. So the last thing I want to discuss is the preparedness of the team. If we are going to provide physician response to the field, we need to be prepared. We can't have ED physicians and uh, surgeons running out of the, the emergency department in the OR in their scrubs with their, with their thoracotomy trays and Mayo stands. We, we need to have the right equipment uh, for this situation, right? We need to train with the providers in the field uh, to work in that environment and be able to communicate with them. And so in LA County, we've been doing these trainings. We try to do them annually. Uh, we train with the paramedics in the field. This is some pictures from our Pasadena training just prior to COVID last year. Uh, and uh, this year we uh, trained up at the County Fire Del Val facility. We had about 50 participants from the Hertz side and uh, also a whole bunch of paramedics from County Fire uh, running through scenarios together. And this is, this is incredibly important to have a robust physician response system. Uh, and so in summary, most patients with trauma will not need a physician. There's no strong data to suggest that physician-based systems are better than paramedic-based systems. And there is data to suggest about 5% of patients overall may actually benefit from physician care in the field. On the flip side, some patients will benefit and therefore we have to have protocols, policies, training in place to be able to mobilize these physicians to the field uh, for those patients who really do need higher level care. The EMS medical director, EMS physician oversight is incredibly important. This is where we can make probably the most difference. And further research is needed to really define the role of physicians in field care. And uh, Favang about 10 years ago proposed five uh, key uh, priorities. Uh, and I think these are still relevant today. 
So that's the end of my talk. I thank you for listening and I'll take questions after. Thanks so much.